Friday. So I'm a couple of minutes late. So I'll wait a few more minutes before I go over my list of summer garden chores. Oops, a little windy. So how was your week? What's going on in your garden? Move this a little bit here, there we go. And I'm going to log into my laptop. Ed is here, hello Ed, good to see you. Best advice I ever got with my gardening was your suggestion to add worm castings. I had the best, oh my goodness, that is so good to hear Ed. Oh, worm castings, I don't know, it is the best, um, most natural fertilizer. And, oops, hold on a second. And ever since I started using it, um, and also we produce a little bit, our garden has been thriving and um, they are much healthier. We rarely have to deal with any insect pests also. So it's just overall really great for the soil and the plants. And maybe I'll uh, do another live stream on worm castings next time. But I did upload a video uh, last night or the night before about using worm castings in the garden and the benefits of it. All right, so I got my laptop on and I've got the chat up here. Okay, Rehan Fra Francis, oh, thank you so much. So nice of you, appreciate that. So I have a few notes here. I've got some garden chores to, sh chores to share with you and if you have any to share with us, please leave them in the chat here so we can also see what you are doing right now in your garden or any tasks that you might be doing around July. So that would be great if you can share. All right, so got a few more people jumping in. Hello, Jay, and I hope you grow. Hello, happy Friday. How was your week? my laptop in front <laughs> and what are you guys harvesting or what did you harvest this week Jackie's here hi Jackie the weather is much cooler in fact um, I think it's only 68 70 degrees it's a little um, cool uh, chill chilly not really cold but um, had to wear a sweatshirt um, compared to what it was was a uh, two and a half weeks ago with a heat wave our just our weather just fluctuates here and we don't really get um, heat waves here that often so that was a kind of a once in a lifetime kind of thing so we're back to the normal mild weather in the Pacific Northwest so this is what we're used to the perfect temperature for us is between between 70 to 75 degrees and we're happy but anything warmer than that <laughs> we kind of you know I don't know we don't handle it that that well here so I hope you grow it's so mild here 70s and 60s yes we're down to the 50s at night uh, mid 50s old fava bean, fava bean plants are flowering oh nice good so James F your yard always looks good long time since I got in touch hi James good to see you the camera's on the side <laughs> I'm gonna move there um, so let's see here all my plants are doing well we have a lot had a lot of rain in michigan lately take care you too and red onyx hi there hi sis good to see you jay i'm glad it's the weekend i pulled a few spring onions yummy good good so steven 89 degrees oh that's pretty warm and william the leaves on my shinseki pear look kind of shocked after the heat wave yes We've had a, a few plants that um, was not looking too happy and some of uh, the foliage um, burnt, got burned. I didn't put a, any shade cloth, but um, it's crazy because some of the heat toler tolerant lettuces actually man managed it well and didn't even burn. Um, and we were still harvesting them up to last week. So Organic's Best Urban Gardener is here. Hello, brother. Good to see you. Thanks for hopping on. So you can see my farm on Facebook and also on Instagram, Rehan Francis. Is that under your um, page? You have an Instagram page or is it just your first and last name? Let's 
let's see. So Ed, you have the best weather for growing. You know what? Um, we have a pretty long growing season here. So we have that temperate weather, although we do have, have a lot of cloudy days. So it's best to plant in full sun as much as possible, but we can grow pretty much all year round, um, you know, using um, season extenders like row covers and um, all that stuff. Cold frame, you can grow under the snow too. Let's see, so Steven squash cuke wilt every day in large pots. I have sh shaded them to give them cool weather. Oh, cool water, yes. Yep, got a mulch, right? So Christina's here, hi Christina. I just pulled all of my red potatoes. They didn't do well in the heat and started to die. But I got some, oh, eight pounds is not bad at all. Yes, you know, the, some of the potatoes I was watering and um, some of them didn't make it, still didn't make it. And I've had issues with just um, the animals digging up everything, guys. The squirrels are just digging up everything. and But um, at least we have extra raspberries because now they're into the raspberry uh, canes, but they've left the rest of the crops alone in the ground for now. They didn't dig up some of the seeds I sowed, so I finally have some summer squash going. But I've had to sow the seeds four times, and I've had to sow corn at least three times um, until they started to germinate because they, they, they didn't get to the rest of them, thank goodness. So Shalayam Israel, hello sister, good to see you as well. Thank you so much for hopping on. And Indiana Backyard Gardener is here. Hello Indiana ba Backyard Gardener and Pick Six is here. Jackie, what's what's that growing on your table? Oh, behind me, the flower. Um, Jackie, so oh, are you talking about? Actually, I was going to show you these beans I pulled because I was thinning, and I wanted to wait till they start to flower because it's kind of interesting. Uh, these are clevia, so it's um, it's related to amaryllis. So they're beautiful. They're native to Africa. So clevia. I don't know if you can, let me pick it up so you can see. It's, it's really pretty. So it's got coral flowers. Look at that, guys. Look how beautiful that is. So this is not hardy to my zone. So I bring this indoors. Um, it's hardy to zone nine. So I bring it outdoors in the summer. Then it goes back indoors before winter. So it's only hardy to, I believe, around maybe 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. But what's interesting about this plant is I've had it for nearly 23 years. My mother um, gave me the baby plants from her mother plants that she's had for a long, long time. So this is a very special plant to me. Um, it's one of my first house plants. So yeah, over 23 years old and it, it's, it's had, I've, I've planted or propagated some seedlings from it before too. So a little bit of, um, let's see, scorching on the leaves from the heat wave, but it'll be fine. They're pretty resilient. Thanks, Jay. Yes, it's old. It's the, they're the same exact plants, and they don't they don't mind being crowded in the pots. But I, I've had to transplant it maybe five times, so um, I need to separate them. There's three in there, but it's just amazing how well it's done. Thanks, sis. Rooted onyx. How hot is it over there right now? It's only about I think it's oh gosh, 69, 68 degrees. I need some cages, Indiana Backyard Gardener said. Yeah, I did not put um, the bird netting or um, for the birds because they were eating the blueberries as well. Um, so I didn't put, I, I should actually build a structure or have my husband help build a structure and maybe put chicken wire so we can um, contain some of the berry shrubs so the animals not, don't get in there. But um, mulching thickly, does help. They, they don't dig up all the mulch and those are the ones that started to sprout um, that the squirrels couldn't get to. Let's see. A squirrel trap. I don't have any, um, I, you know what, maybe that's something I can look into and relocate them, Big Six? A, a squirrel trap. So I, I haven't even um, looked into that yet. So that might be a good idea. So Steven has purple Pole bean, oh, purple pole bean leaves. Crinkled stress, no flowers, too hot. Yes, 
So a lot of the bean plants, actually it applies to many, even warm crops. If it's too hot, if it hits, um, for beans, I believe it's if it's over 85 to 90 degrees, sometimes the flowers fall. It's um, too hot for it to produce. So it'll reserve all the energy so that way it can survive the um, unfavorable conditions. So when it starts to cool down, um, it should start producing flowers again. And this has happened to my scarlet runner beans almost every year. So sometimes in the middle of summer when it's, we have this um, um, extreme heat, it'll kind of um, halt production. But as soon as it starts to cool down, it'll start producing again for you. And make sure you, you harvest um, often. So beans, peas, um, that way it'll stimulate the plant to produce more instead of going to seed. So T4 Roses, I am in the Pacific Northwest. I am in Zone 8B, Washington State. So Shaliam Yisrael, all your flowers are, uh, and your entire garden is beautiful. Thank you so much, sister. Very wonderful job taking care of nature and creation. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Indeed. Yay, no more heat wave. <laughs> Let's see. Picked a bunch of garlic. Oh my gosh, I harvested the elephant garlic, but I didn't do a video. I just haven't had time. I still have to harvest the um, other garlic. So that's gonna be happening this week. A lot of the garlic uh, started to turn brown very early on because of the heat wave, but the bulbs were not ready yet. I checked, I just moved some of the soil and um, they're, they're still um, maturing. So I left them in there. So I'm going to go, oh my gosh, I need to go over my garden chore list. Um, let me just see what else, if there's any other questions or comments. Um, so in the end, a backyard garden, or yes, a structure is what I'm thinking. Yes, um, you know, just um, some chicken wire supported by some garden stakes maybe, or even actually I have also used um, the hoop, the hoops for the hoop tunnels. You can do that too for shorter shrubs um, and then just put the bird netting around it and clamp it on with some garden clips or clothespin or the um, the garden staple so you can also anchor it into the ground. So farm life with kids, um, no more heat right now. It's been much better. So <laughs> we're back in the 70s and 50s at night. Adrian Wiseman, yes, we're growing parsley. We grow them every year. We have both the Italian flat leaf and the curly. Let's see. Oh, so Indiana, backyard gardener says it's just um, so bad with harvest videos. I am too. I actually, I most of the time I forget about the harvest videos. I, I don't think I've really done one this year. I've done a few last year, but I rarely do them. So sometimes um, you, you don't really think about it and you know, you want to make other content and then you don't have you run out of time <laughs> so I'll, I'll make a point to do that but I have been uploading um, some short shorts videos so let's see hello from Shihalis Al Alexa wait is it Alexia hi there our corner started pushing out ears oh lucky you good job I'm so late this year guys the, our corn plants are really tiny I think I mentioned earlier that um, the squirrels just keep digging up all the seeds. So I have to sow corn about three, yeah, three times. And they're finally sprouting. And they planted their early corn variety. So that way, hopefully we'll get something before it starts to get, get cold. My three-year-old bro broccoli plant went to seed, planted them, and they're starting now. Nice. Let's see. So from life with kids, oh, it's hot over there. Stay cool and hydrated and stay safe. That was horrible a couple of weeks back for us. Like we're just not used to it here and most of us don't have air conditioning. Oh, leave now? Okay, okay, Adrian. good to see you. <laughs> so i um, going to hop on here with a list of garden chores. I think I've mentioned a couple in there already. So um, number one, so these are seven garden chores, summer garden chores. Number one is, if um, you have any dead foliage or diseased foliage, remove them right away. You don't want them sitting on your plant or on the ground because it'll harbor the disease. You'll want to discard any diseased foliage. And I don't compost them. I usually just throw them away. Um, any foliage or leaves that are healthy and 
did not have any um, disease on them, you can compost those. And also, if you leave all these um, dying foliage on the ground, um, it can also attract um, critters like roly polies. Um, what's that? Oh gosh, <laughs> the pincher bugs. Um, I can't think. I'm, I'm I blanked out here. Any other decomposers? Um, it'll attract all those decomposers, and sometimes they will eat your crops. So just make sure to remove all the decaying foliage and then compost them or throw them away. So that's number one. Number two, if you allowed some of your herbs to flower for the, for the pollinators, make sure to cut back the stalk as soon as possible when the flowers are starting to dry. That way it'll promote your plants to produce more leaves for you that you can harvest. So I did this with our sage and lavender. Um, I think even cilantro, I let them flower because I want to collect the seeds. But um, if you want to harvest more foliage from your sage and other flowering um, herbs, make sure to cut back the flower stalks. And you can compost those. Or you can save the flowers for drying if you want to um, use them for other stuff that um, herbal remedies or um, a potpourri, <laughs> so, but yeah, make sure to cut them back as soon as possible. Earwigs, yes, I hope you grow, yes. So that's what I was saying about removing dead foliage is because it will attract earwigs and roly polies um, and even centipedes and millipedes. And that's where they hide is under all the decomposing matter, wood chips. And that's why I usually try to keep the wood chips away from the plants too. You don't want to mulch too close to the plants. But other than that, um, Yes, just make sure you don't lay, leave all the dead leaves um, around near your crops. And that's happened with my lettuce a couple weeks back. I didn't remove the decaying leaves in the bottom. And then there was a lot of roly polies underneath there. They're just hiding under all that um, dead leaves. So it gave them a home and also gave them some food. And then they started, started eating their strawberries. So I'll go back to the chat after I go through the um, list of chores, okay? Oh, mulch, number three. If you haven't mulched yet, I think I mentioned that just a couple minutes ago, is uh, make sure you mulch. It'll conserve moisture. You don't have to water as often. It'll also prevent your soil from eroding. It protects the soil, the structure, the microbes in there. Um, and also over time, if you're using organic mulch, like wood chips, shredded leaves, straw or dry grass that will break down over time and will decompose or break down and feed the soil feed the microbes and recycle back the nutrients into the soil so mulch if you haven't yet okay so number four i i think i actually mentioned this earlier harvest often so crops like beans peas squash cucumbers you want to harvest as soon as the fruits are ready. If you leave them be on the vines, they will mature and start to produce seeds and the production slows down. So once the plant is signaled to produce seeds, it won't produce any more fruits for you. So make sure you harvest as soon as they're ready. Um, zucchini squash, I usually harvest them when they're about, um, about seven to eight inches long. Now I do let some some mature and grow into those big <laughs> zucchini and we harvest those to make bread and muffins um, but if you let them mature um, like I said it's going to stop producing those um, younger fruits okay so that was number four now number five is if you like to uh, save some seeds from your garden harvest them and store them so allow them to mature on the plants let them dry and um, put them in a, um, a container, tightly sealed container or bags, whatever you use. I pretty much use what I have on hand. I reuse sandwich bags or dark clean that I've used before for seeds, um, even some envelopes and, or coin envelopes. I use those to save seeds as well or just little tiny zip Ziploc bags or zipper bags that I reuse from other seeds that I purchased before. So, and also just make sure to, that the seeds are completely dry so that, that way they don't mold. And you want to store them in a dark, dry, and cool place away from sunlight. You don't want to expose your seeds from um, to sunlight because it can um, affect the seeds and may make them less viable. 
okay? So store your seeds properly. And I know some of you store seeds in the freezer. So that's another way too. It can preserve them longer. Um, I, I've only done that once. It's been a while, but we have a basement. So it stays nice and cool down there. So some are dry. So they do well and they last for a while. Okay. No, so number six, um, clean your tools. So this, I'm really guilty <laughs> with, with dirty garden tools. Um, sometimes I just leave them laying around and um, it's, you know, it's important to take care of your tools so that way they don't wear out faster and get rusty. Um, so that way they're ready for, for use and keep them away from um, the elements out of the rain and wind. So if you have somewhere to keep your tools like in a shed or in the garage, keep them, try to keep them clean, clean as much as possible. So that way they'll last longer for you and they're ready to use when you have a task to do in the garden. Okay. Oh, my tools. <laughs> I know I, I left my, one of my pruners. It was a good one too. And I was in a hurry and I got left out in the rain. But um, the rust, you can take off the rust. You can use it. I think some people use some oil or baking soda. There's a few ways to clean your tools. But the less is better if you ha don't have to clean them as much. Just take care of them first, right? Prevention. Okay. Last garden chore, number seven, is sow more seeds. So even though it's mid-July, like I mentioned last week in the live stream you can still sow some seeds just make sure to choose varieties of crops that will mature quick enough before your first frost and before it starts to get cold the days are shorter so the plants are not going to grow as fast um, and also try to grow what you like to eat and what does well in your climate so that's number seven Ooh. Okay, it looks like Indiana Backyard Gardener has a tip on how to clean your tools. So she keeps them clean with peroxide. Thank you for sharing that. So I've tried the oil and I think I've done baking soda before, but the peroxide, that's um, very convenient. So it's only one ingredient. Thank you. Let's see here. Len Hill, he hello. Thank you for joining the chat. It breaks down really quick. Let's see. Oh, let me go back up to the chat real quick here, okay? So I can catch up. So Green, green Love, hi, Miss Love, checking in from the drought rain in California. Not growing corn because it's, yes, it, it takes up a lot of water. So I mulched that whole patch over there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll, I'll, maybe I can turn the, no, there's too much, um, you won't be able to see it but we have a patch of um, squash and pumpkin and corn and I put um, dry grass clipping mulch on maybe about three inches so that's helping um, conserve the moisture but yeah um, a lot of the fruit trees in California um, you know and corn they do need a lot of water so it's hard to um, conserve water you know especially for growing them I think I, I talked to a friend in California. He's had to um, cut down a couple of trees because he couldn't keep up because of the water. Um, he just um, uh, couldn't um, keep up with having to water all the fruit trees and not having to conserve. So the obsessive, obsessive gardener, hello there. Good to see you. Jay, when should you harvest my potatoes? My plants are flowering, but some leaves are wilting and going yellow and brown. Oh, okay, so it just depends, Jay, um, of um, the variety of potato that you planted. Do you know what variety? So the early potatoes, you can harvest between um, 70 to 95 days. So there's early potatoes, there's uh, mid-season potatoes between 95 to 100, and I think 10 days, and then your late season varieties can grow from 100 to 140 days so the good sign that you have here is you said some of the leaves are wilting turning yellow and brown that's a good sign that it's starting to die back when it's flowering and uh, when the potatoes are flowering that's a sign where when the the plant is still producing um, the baby potatoes or new potatoes so you have some potatoes in there when it's starting to flower already but if you want it to mature you want to wait till the plants die back and I actually wait till the plants die back completely. 
um, just because um, leaving them in the ground a little bit longer will partially cure them which hardens and thickens the skin especially if you want to um, uh, keep them for long-term storage and you want to do that with potatoes that store lo um, longer or um, are better for storage um, like Yukon Gold is a good storage potato I think oh gosh Kennebec, Katadin, Yellowfin those are just some of the um, good um, long-term storage potatoes um, so if you know some more details about what you planted the varieties that you planted um, so other than that you can eat them right away if you are not planning on storing them long but if one of them is yellow and brown that could be a sign that it's ready but also it could be a, a sign of um, a disease so check the the plants again okay but i would wait till the flowers start to fall before you even harvest and you can even check by just carefully moving the soil away from you know from the main stem and just check in there to see if you have any potatoes and if they're still pretty little and you want them to um, grow more then just bury them back up and keep them away from being exposed to sunlight you don't want green potatoes because you can't eat them all right let's see here so beetles earwigs all, all kinds of garden garden critters and pests um Oh, don't read my real name. Don't read my name when I chat. Oh, okay. I hope you grow earwigs, my arch nemesis. Centipedes, slugs. Ah. <laughs> I'm mulch, but when. Okay, then I get roly polies and earwigs. Yeah, that's why um, I do too. But you know what? If there's enough um, organic matter in there, in, there, in, the, in the soil um, to feed on, as long as you have a right balance of things, um, they will leave your crops alone. So try to mulch away from the center, from the, yeah, from the main stem of your plants. I try to keep it at least um, three to six inches away from the main plant, the, from the stem. And if you're mulching trees, you can keep the mulch away at least 12 to 18 inches away from the trunk because you don't want the, um, all these critters to harbor around your plants. You wanna keep them away from the main trunk or stem. All right, I keep them all right. So Jay, main crop. Okay, oh, you're welcome. We don't have, high, oh, we don't have peroxide. Um, Adrian, oh, I mean, don't use your, don't say your name. Okay, you can use, um, there's other ways to clean your tools if you don't have peroxide, but they're pretty inexpensive. You can get them at most um, grocery stores or drug stores, so, or even online. So I would check that. All right, I think I'm caught up in the chat. Do you uh, have anything that you'd like to share, chores that you guys are doing right now that you'd like to share with us? So if you want to leave them in the chat there, that we would appreciate that. All right, so other than that, um, it's, it's 4.32, so I have to actually run a couple of errands, so I won't be able to stay long today. Hi, Wayne. So um, I'll make sure to leave a list of the garden chores. It's an airplane. It's going to be loud. Okay. <laughs> There's an airport nearby us now. So it's, uh, it's been like this for a few months. Hey, Miriam. Good to see you. Didi O'Brien's here. Hello. I have so much blackberry. Ah, nice. Wait, cutting to do. <laughs> you, you, you must be getting a lot of blackberries. Cleaning used seed trays for future uses. Okay, cleaning used seed trays. So Indiana Backyard Gardener has a tip, especially if you're going to start your fall planting. So make sure to clean, clean your seed trays if you're starting seeds um, indoors or out. So Jay has been uh, thinking of planning to plant winter seed for winter months. So growing indoors, if you, um have any supplemental lighting you can definitely glow it grow glow <laughs> grow indoors we love to grow microgreens during the winter months um, those are great and they're so healthy for you so green loves said making seeds starting mix and potting soil 
It is a constant chore. Yes, it's always good to have that on hand. So that's another good tip. And Indiana Backyard Gardener getting the prepped for fall seedlings. So neem, okay. Oh, okay, that's for, for Wayne. Neem oils, per, yep, it's great. They black pathways in the farm, Ellie blossoms on so I can pick them later. Nice. <laughs> See anything help with overwater peppers? Oh, we means oh no. Yeah, if you're getting a lot of rain, I try to um, move the pepper plants, especially if you have them in pots. I try to move them to a sheltered location. That happened to me last year. Um, a lot of my pepper plants got waterlogged because we got so much rain last spring, and some of them did actually end up getting a disease. Um, if um, if you can't uh, move them because they're in the ground. You can try to fluff the soil around it to allow some of the moisture, excess moisture to evaporate. So if you can just fluff the soil on top of around your pepper plants all the way around, um, that'll maybe help um, get rid of some of the extra moisture. Let's see, so Christina, hi there, Christina. I'm planting for all for fall and mulching this building a greenhouse for winter nice oh awesome i think christina you're um in the pacific northwest so you should be able to grow to grow in your greenhouse even in the winter all right i think is there let's see let me scroll down here hi toby Oh, no problem. I know I can't stay that long either. But um, like I said earlier, I'll be listing the chores that I discussed in the description of this video. Thanks for stopping by, Toby. So is it Liza? I will try that. They're in the ground, so I know. Okay, yes. So try that. Um, if you have any mulch and um, around your pepper, maybe move the mulch first and fluff the soil and let some of that um, moisture evaporate. And then when it gets dry again, they can mulch again. All right. Uncle Skinny TV. Hello, Toby. See you again. See you again, Toby. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, is that Anyang Haseyo? I'm back again. Hello. <laughs> Let's see. Miriam, I'm going to experiment with hydroponics since I don't have enough sun on the balcony. Nice! So the only kind of hydroponic, well, I don't know if it really counts, is uh, we bought this um, kit. It was a fish tank <laughs> and it had a bubbler. So it was a really small little hydroponics that um, my kids and I experimented with a few years back. They had a good time um, planting in it. It was actually really fun. So and then we had, um, what kind of fish? We had goldfish in there. So that was neat. Thanks for the like. Let's see. Oh, you are so good. So Indiana Backyard Gardener always reminds me, and I keep forgetting, I should make a note for me to, to note this before I leave the chat, is um, make sure to pre-order my book. It's, for, it's called Four Season Food Gardening. It's um, going to be released February 2022, but I will link, leave a link and a comment in the description and um but you can pre-order pre-order it right now so thank you so much indiana backer gardener you are so thoughtful i appreciate it so much oh green love thank you so much i so appreciate your wonderful channel thanks for all you do and thank thank you to your wonderful community oh thank you and thank you to to all of you as well it's um you guys make this community so um i appreciate all of you so without you, we wouldn't be having this community that we have. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, everyone. Let's see here. So Didi O'Brien, last chore I need to do, that's things I need to spray and scrub the horse barn leaves with vinegar. Oh, the green mossy stuff is thick. Oh no. Yeah, moss is hard to get out, get, get out um, if you, you know, 
if you, if you don't clean it right away. Dinner time. Okay, happy farms. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Grow some marijuana. If it's, uh, I guess, legal where you're at. Thank you, Indiana Backyard Gardener. And make sure to check out her YouTube channel. She's got awesome videos and wonderful garden tips. You too, good night. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Um, so I might have to do the live another day other than Friday next week because we have family coming over and visiting from, from out of town. So I will announce in the community page, I might have to do the live stream on Wednesday or Thursday of next week, okay? So I've got some family staying with us and visiting. I'm so excited. Rooted Onyx, thank you. You too. Take care, sis. Thank you so much. And is that Zector? Thank you. And you're welcome. And have, okay, have a good live stream. Take care. Thank you, Big Six. You guys have a wonderful weekend and um, enjoy your gardens this weekend. Plant something. I can't believe it's that close to fall. So um, if you guys are looking to plant some things um, now and through the fall, make sure to check out last week's, it's the last, last week's live stream and check out the list of um, crops that you can plant now and before fall. So Dina O'Brien, you too. Got some family coming next month. Awesome. And Ed, good night. Take care. Enjoy your dinner. Jason, have a squash plant. I just lear learned. Oh, leaned. Just now leaned over. Should I prop it back? Oh, be careful with the squash plant. Um, if you do prop it back, sometimes they break. Um, like when it's so if you suddenly move it, just be very careful if you decide to prop it back up. Um, that's happened recently with a friend um, last week. I'm not sure if she moved it, but it broke in half. So sometimes it might be better to just leave it as is if you can um, if you have room to let it um, grow out or sprawl out. So I hope that helps. Just I guess just be careful if you do decide to to move your plant. All right, everyone. I'm going to get going. Okay. Have a good night, guys. And I will see you next week. Bye, Christina. See you either Wednesday or Thursday, okay? Not Friday next week. All right. Logging off. Happy gardening. You're welcome, Jason. And Shalyam, yes, you're out. You're uh, oh, ah, hold on a second. Thank you. You always have a good information. Oh, thank you so much, sister. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. I'll see you next week, okay? You guys take care.